Hi there, I'm Alan Newdy for the Historical Aviation Film Unit and I'm here at Flair NZ at Tokofai Airfield near Hamilton, New Zealand talking to Glenn Martin from Martin Jetpack about their recently developed jetpack simulator and about the jetpack itself. One of the interesting things about a jetpack of course because it's a single person aircraft is that your first flight is also your first solo so for most aviators or pilots they'll go well that's a bit of a step up. Uh, and we've attacked that in a couple of ways. First of all, we've made the aircraft incredibly easy to fly, so it's all fly-by-wire. But the other thing we've done is we said, well, we've got to, you know, how did NASA do it? You know, how, how did NASA train Neil Armstrong to land on the moon the first time he had to get it right? You know, so they did it by, of course, a lot of simulation. So uh, we've had a team at the University of Canterbury working on a simulator, uh, and then we've uh, had a professor of aerodynamics come out from Germany to, to work on it for us. Uh, and we've had a lot of help from, from Pacific simulators as well. So we've now got a three-axis simulator which has got the same aerodynamic model in it that the jetpack flies on uh, and it becomes a very realistic you know, experience for people to train. So obviously a lot of work has gone into the development of this, is, is this going to be a, a parallel development with the jetpack? Are you actually going to look at producing the simulator in numbers to get out there in a training run? Yeah, I mean interestingly enough we've been approached by, by a lot of people who, who, who get in the simulator and say gee that's fun. You know, maybe we should have that as a business, just, just making the simulator, you know. Um, we, we haven't gone down that track yet, but certainly uh, some of our more sophisticated customers, like the militaries and the search and rescue organisation, they see that buying into jetpacks, it will be a complete package. They buy five jetpacks and two simulators and a parts supply, very much like, you know, the Royal New Zealand Air Force has just upgraded their helicopter fleet and the simulators come as part of a package. So it, it is going to be an integral part of the training uh, for, for everybody, really, uh, simulator-based training. I mean, why, why, then you can talk quietly to people and, you know, do everything right, get, get them to a certain standard before they even get in the jetpack. How true to life is it? Yeah, well, we think at the moment it's, it's probably in the low 90, I think it's about 92, 93%. Uh, it's, it's a complete mathematical model that's been validated by other people, that's been, been validated by wind tunnel tests, uh, and now every time we fly the jetpack we data log what's happening in the jetpack and all that data goes back into the simulator. I think by the end of the year we'll hit 95% accuracy. Um, they tell me that the A380 simulator is 99.2, so I suppose that's, a, that's our goal. Uh, and of course, you know, people like the A320 simulators, you know, the first time an A320 pilot uh, flies the A320 it's with passengers in the back. You know, the simulator experience is so good that you can get to the point where you can do that. And that's an aspiration, we're not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm sure as time goes on we will get there. You talk over the last couple of days, you've mentioned the, uh, the ballistic recovery systems that you've been developing. I mean, how's that going? It's going really well. I mean, we, we originally used a BRS system, which, which uh, we, we put that video out on, on uh, you know, flying to 5,000 feet and firing that off. And that worked really well, but the BRS system was designed for a horizontal aircraft, not a vertical aircraft. It isn't optimised for us. Uh, so we're working with Rocket Lab in Auckland to, to develop a parachute that is designed specifically for the jetpack. Uh, and it will open dramatically faster than the BRS and, and, and should almost get rid of the whole avoidance curve for us. So it's, uh, we've, it's, so far the development's going really well and we expect to see you know, full scale parachute tests by the end of the year. Certainly, um, yeah, looking at the, the avoidance curves that you displayed the other day, I mean, uh, you, you're going to reduce those hopefully to almost nothing, so it's going to be a, a, a very safe um, craft to fly. Yeah, and I think that's important, you know, we, um, the, the world has changed, you know, I think if you tried to certify a, 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 a Piper Cherokee in the modern days, I'd probably say it's not safe enough, or even some of the helicopters, you know, so the world's moved on, and we, we have a very safe, you know, cars with airbags and all sorts of things, and uh, and we've sort of tried to take that technology. We have the opportunity here to make, the, I think, the world's safest aircraft, certainly the world's safest VTOL aircraft. So let's do it, you know. And that has, I suppose, uh, cost some time and money. But in the end, I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, and, and so I have to sort of ask everybody to be patient again about when is the jetpack going to be ready, you know. It'll be ready when it's going to be ready. I'm sure Boeing got asked about their Dreamliner many times. When is it going to be ready? But, you know, we all understand these things have to be right. Yeah. So safety first and do it once and do it right. Yeah, I mean, we've been flying the jetpack since, uh, since uh, 98, I think my wife did the first flight. Uh, and under the, the US microlight rules, there are no rules. Um, and we could have started selling it then. But, you know, effectively from 98 until now, we've de been developing the aircraft to be safer, more capable, and, and we're not going to put it out into the public field until we're, well, until I am 100% happy. 
And, and I know civil aviation, of course, will want us to do that as well, and as will the customers.